We're going to look at 1.2.3, which is converting a summation into an integral. And what we're going to need is a definition. And this is the first definition from the textbook in section 1.2. And the uh, important part here is uh, we're going to start with this xi right here. And then once we know what xi is, we sh it should be more obvious what the f function is. So let's write down what xi is. Uh, xi is going to be in the input for the f function. And when I look at our problem here, we're going to go just inside the square brackets here. And what we're going to do is look at what structure this is taking. I see this thing is appearing twice. So there's definitely a cosine involved and an eighth power. And what I've just highlighted is xi. Uh, one big hint that it's xi is because there's i's in it. So this is xi right here. And I'm going to rewrite it above. Uh, so we have xi to the eighth power times cosine of xi. And looking up above, what did we just get? What I just wrote down is this whole thing f of xi. So what that means, this is f of xi. Uh, so if I just plug in regular x into this function, you're going to replace all these xi's with just an x. So that's what it looks like right there. So that will be the answer to what is f of x. Now what we're going to do is figure out a and b. These are actually a little more tricky. Uh, if you do a few problems like this, you'll be able to tell what the f function is quite easily, and you probably laugh every time you say it, uh, but you'll be able to figure out what the f function is uh, just by looking at the pattern. Now we're gonna look for a and b. That's a bit more tricky. So we're going across an interval. Smallest value is a, biggest value is b. Now, I don't I'm not going to write an x, a y-axis in here because if I write a y-axis, then I'm assuming a is negative, b is positive. If I write my y-axis over here, I'm assuming they're both positive. And anyways, you don't need a y-axis for this part. Uh, how do we get a and b? All right. xi is going to be uh, an intermediate value between a and b. Sometimes it, at the initial uh, value is a at the final value it's b now will be the initial value generally x0 is going to be the initial value and xn is going to be the final value so that's one way to get this uh, so if we go uh, of course we just got xi above so let's rewrite that to plus I'm gonna write it as just i over n all right, so that's xi. So let's figure out what is x0. It's going to equal a, but x0 using our formula here is, and I'll do that over here, x0. I'm going to replace i by 0. So 2 plus 0 is 2. So x0 is 2, which of course is a. And then b is our xn. It's our final value. So let's go figure out what xn is. We're going to replace i by n. 2 plus n over n, and we just reduce that fraction, that's 2 plus 1, which is 3. So b is going to equal 3, and that's our a and our b value right there.